Hello, let's try something first to put you in the context. If you cover one eye, how does the world look like to you? How about the other eye? Now you realize when you look by two eyes together, the world looks a little bit deeper. This is because your two eyes are the visual field that overlap with each other, adding the third dimension into your 3D vision. Different from the classic neuroscience concept, the eyes don't just send axons to the opposite side of the brain. A small proportion of signal is also sent to the same side of the brain. During the development, how do the eyes know whether its axons are following the correct direction? A lot of molecules and protein are involved in the process to channel the eye axon to the correct destinations in the brain. The brain has a special protective layer, it's called the meningi, matte in red color here. The meningi in early period act as a physical anchor to hold up the structure where a lot of things was moving inside the brain. It's also released a lot of factors into the brain to help in the process of brain development. If you look closer, at some point the meningi comes really close to the axon that sent from the eyes to the brain, but not many people study this function before. So in my project, I study the role of meningeal factors in the optic tract development. They are proteins that are released from the meningi that are marked in different colors here. The one in yellow is enzyme that convert chemical into the active form that act on the optic tract. The cluster in blue, green and brown are the proteins that we know to involve in process of structural development of the brain. My first candidate, SEF1, marked in red color in the middle, is a chemokine that we know the function to attract different groups of neuronal cells to the correct location in the brain. We examine SEF1 and identify as expressed in the meningi and also release from the meningi to nearby the optic tract. How do we know whether it's really help in the optic tract development though? Step number one, we know SDF1 acts on only two different receptors, CXCR4 and CXCR7. So we screen the eyes to see whether it helps these receptors to accept the signal of SDF1 or not. You look at the eyes picture here, the purple staining marked out the expression of the receptors in the exact group of cells in the eye that are going to send the axon to the brain. So that's a good start. But what exactly the effect is? So we come to step number two. Take out the pieces of the eye, put SDF1 in to test the direct effect. Look at the black panel here. Voila! Increasing the amount of SDF1 increase the fuzziness of the pieces and you are looking directly at the axon growing from the eyes. So now we have the first hand evidence to show that the meningeal factor actually help to promote the optic tract development. So now when we look at embryo born with different eye defects, we now have more clues to test where it went wrong and maybe it come from the meninges.